May I call upon Ms. Mary Hestofer. Uh, Chairman Inouye, Ranking Member Cong uh, Mr. Cochran, and members of the committee, I really want to thank you again for allowing me to come before you to present uh, our case on behalf of mesothelioma patients. I'm a nurse practitioner. I've been treating patients for over 12 years with this disease, and I'd like to share a little bit of information that I think is important for the Department of Defense. Um, mesothelioma is directly related to asbestos exposure. It's an extremely rare disease. There's about 3,500 cases uh, diagnosed per year. Of those 3,500 cases, one-third can be directly related to either Navy, uh, Navy duty or working in shipyards. Um, so we lose a tremendous amount of Navy vets to this disease, and it remains an active threat now because exposure to, ex after exposure to asbestos, the latency period can be anywhere from 10 to 50 years. So this remains a constant threat and something that we really need to do something about. Um, from the time of diagnosis, the average survival is uh, documented as six to nine months. We have one approved therapy, and that's uh, a drug combination, uh, and that extends uh, the median survival to 12.3 months. Uh, I'd like to use a Navy vet who I'm very close to to give you an illustration of what the life of a mesothelioma patient is like. Uh, Tom Schakowsky, who asked that I share his name and his story, uh, was a sauna man. He worked as an underwater fire control technician on the USS Fletcher. He describes his situation as having spent four years in asbestos cocoon on the Navy ship. He directly, uh, he directly um, correlates his development of mesothelioma to his time served in the Navy. Tom was faced with a tough decision. He could have chemotherapy and extend life to 12.3 months or try something experimental. And the best experimental we have right now is what we call an extra pleural pneumonectomy, where we remove the entire lung, the lining of the lung, the lining of the mediastinum, which is the center of the chest, and the lining of the heart. The heart is, just in case, the heart is then encased in a sac to keep it in place. Patients are subjected to chemotherapy and radiation therapy, and yet this is not a cure. And in fact, Tom, after having undergone this procedure, now faces the decision of what type of chemotherapy he's going to have for his fourth recurrence of the disease. Tom is out of options. He has one lung, it flu fills with fluid, and traveling for treatment is, becomes very difficult, uh, especially in terms of having so few clinical trials to offer. What we're asking today is that, um, that the, that the uh, committee recognizes the need for mesothelioma as a, uh, and to spur research in this field. And we'd like you to take this upon as a critical national priority by providing at least $5 million in funding for mesothelioma research through the Congressionally Directed Medical Research Program for the Fiscal Year 2013 Defense Appropriations Bill, rather than the mere eligibility in the peer-reviewed cancer research program Mesothelioma needs to be designated a specific line item. Mesothelioma patients who have already risked their lives by serving in their country's armed services do not have this time to wait. I care deeply about my mesothelioma patients, the caregivers, and those people that have lost loved ones to this disease, and I really ask you to join me in caring deeply about this community as well and helping us to find a cure and to raise research dollars so others, like Tom, will not have to go through these devastating choices and will enjoy a better quality of life and extended survival. Thank you so much. As you know, we're constantly reminded of mesothelioma by television ads of law firms. Mm -hmm. But uh, your suggestion, I think, has some merit. We'll look into it. Thank you so much. Thank you.